empty the chamber on them. And how do you do that? Four six seconds, point eight, point feet, everything you got. Everything you got. Turn that shit up. Let's go. Let's go. Welcome to the Scoop World Order, most powerful men in college football edition. I am interviewing one of the true legends of the game, a guy who's done a ton uh, for the college football playoff, and does a ton for the beginning of the season, the end of the season. He's a guy that many of you probably don't know, but behind the scenes, he is a monster. And he's a great person. I'm super excited about this interview. Uh, so we're going to get this started up with Gary Stokin, the CEO and president of the Peach Bowl. But first... As always, we are thankful and grateful for you guys. Thank you guys so much for this. Comment down below. Would you go see the Ohio State Buckeyes play in Atlanta in a Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl? Because I know I would. That's a bowl that we've never played in, which is crazy to me. Uh, it's a fantastic city, College Football Hall of Fame. These guys have done a fantastic job. One of the most beautiful stadiums in all of the world is now located in Atlanta. Super excited about this. Without further ado, I'm going to bring in... My friend, Gary Soaking. Gary, how are you tonight? Kirk, happy Thanksgiving, you and your listeners. Thanks for having us. Uh, I, I appreciate you so much. Uh, you know, being able to do this interview is a great honor for me. I am super excited because I uh, was fortunate enough to play in uh, three Fiesta Bowls, a couple Sugar Bowls. Uh, great. I know the kind of work you guys do. It's a year-round job, so I am thankful for and grateful for you guys because those bowl trips, when you were a college kid, especially pre NIL and pre, you know, all the extra things they get now, that was basically like your vacation. That was like your payoff to go to, like, I get to go to Tempe and sit in Scottsdale Princess for a week. It was fantastic. Um, I'm sure you guys have a similar experience. Give our listeners a little taste of what, you know, when you have that seven day bowl experience, uh, what does that entail for you guys? Walk through a little bit of the stuff that you do. We had, uh, we talked about it in pre show. It's fascinating the stuff that you can do in a city like Atlanta. Walk our listeners through some of the neat things that you guys do for these teams for that, that first playoff game. Well, Kirk, you know you are players, so you know it's important for us to reward the players because they're the reason that we have a bowl game. It's a reward for the players, and we use a theme of live, laugh, and learn. We want the players to live great, travel first class, stay in great hotels, uh, get great gifts, um, you know, play in a great facility and uh, eat great food like Chick-fil-A. And then we want them to laugh. So we we've created a battle for Bowl Week belt, which is the 40 pound WWE belt. I noticed your SWO opening, oh. so it would go great <laughs> with that. Uh, yep. And every night, you know, as you know, I haven't been a player, you know, you have practice and you have meetings and you have video and you know, it can get monotonous for a week. So we want to liven it up a little bit, let the kids laugh. And all kids want to do is compete against each other. So we have a competition every night uh, from basketball shooting to bowling to uh, family feud to race cart driving. And uh, the winner that night gets to take the belt home with them. And then they have to give the belt back at the end of the night the next day. We have another competition. So, you know, they laugh a lot and have a great time for the battle for bowl week belt. And then we want them to learn. So um, we take them to children's health care, the coach and players uh, where kids didn't get out of the hospital for Christmas and may never get out of that hospital with cancer. And so we want them to give back to the families and the kids during the holiday season, which is so important. And then lastly, we do something you're not supposed supposed to do we put both teams together in the pews at Ebenezer Baptist Church and uh, they'll hear from uh, this year Ambassador Young and Coach Bill Curry to uh, talk about uh, you know some societal issues and teamwork and uniting this and those type of things that are so relevant it's basically a history lesson with Am Andy Young who was one of the top eight people with Dr. Martin Luther King who actually was the pastor of Ebenezer Baptist Church and spoke from the pulpit. And uh, I never remember, I never forget uh, Congressman Lewis, who just passed away, who led the march on on the Selma Bridge. Uh, he, he was uh, in charge of the student movement for the civil rights civil rights movement. And he said the morning of the Selma Bridge, he put on his backpack. Well, all these kids have backpacks on, sitting in the pews. So he instantaneously connects with him. And he said he woke up that day and he put an apple, a book, 
toothbrush and toothpaste in his backpack because he knew he was going to go to jail. And he got to the top of the crest of the Selma Bridge and Hosea Williams, who was next to him, said he looked over and saw all the state uh, Alabama police on horses with guns and bats. And he said, John, can you swim? He said, because I'm thinking of jumping off the bridge and swimming over. And John said, I can't swim, so I'm marching over. And he marched over. And we've all seen the film. He gets hit over the head, skull cracked open. Uh, police wagon comes up. Didn't rush him to the amp, uh, didn't rush him to the hospital. Rushed him to jail. And um, you know, by the time he tells that story, the kids, you know, learned a history lesson instantaneously. They sitting on the side of the or uh, move up in the pews, and really pay strict attention. And I'll never forget at the end of his talk. Um, you know, one of the black kids raised his hand and said, uh, Congressman Lewis, thank you, because without you doing what you did, my family wouldn't be where it's at and I wouldn't be sitting here today. Um, and then C.T. Vivian got up and he said, you know, I told my wife uh, one day, he said, you know, I may not be back tonight, honey. And she said, so you're staying in the hotel tonight? And he said, no, where we're going, I, I may not make it out. I may not come back. So, um, you know, those kind of stories are important because kids haven't lived the uh, civil rights movement. So for them to get a, an actual living history lesson is important. So again, we want kids to learn uh, when they're in our experience. So that's kind of our week and our theme that we use for the week uh, during Bull Week. Yeah, I, I love that. I think that, you know, it's, it's their, uh, you know, you, the kids are there for fun. Obviously, they've got a job to do at the end of the week. But, you know, when you can mix in some of the stuff you just talked about, I think it makes it just how important it is to have uh, have bowl games and have, you know, great committees like you run uh, that can organize events like that. It can really uh, impact some of these guys' lives to see some of the stuff that happened before, uh, before their time and some of the reason why they can play college football. I'm going to switch gears. So you've been – the head of this for 25 years. Talk a little bit about how uh, Georgia football has changed uh, dramatically. I mean, obviously, you guys have a beautiful new building. The Georgia Bulldogs are, are kind of leading the charge right now on college football. They are a fantastic crew led by Kirby Smart. Uh, Georgia high school football is as good as as there is in the country, in my opinion. Uh, Justin Fields, Trevor Lawrence, uh, a lot of superstars coming out of that area. Talk a little bit about the growth of Georgia football over your tenure as the head and CEO of the, of the Peach Bowl. Yeah, Kirk, you mentioned the high school. Um, the high school coaching in Georgia is maybe the best in the country uh -huh. because the uh, high schools really pay the coaches well because in every one of these little communities in Georgia, kind of like Texas, high school football is a huge deal on Friday nights. They close up the town and people support, uh, you know, the high school team. So the coaching is really good. The kids are really good players. They get their grades. Um, you know, we're, we're almost overtaking California for third place in the number of kids that matriculate on college football scholarships from Georgia. And we're so much smaller, obviously, than California. Uh, but we're behind Texas and Florida, California right now. And we're top five in producing NFL players uh, from the state of Georgia. So, um, yeah, high school is really good. College, as you mentioned, you know, having Georgia the national champion. Um, Kirby Smart doesn't have to go much outside of Georgia recruiting-wise. And I I'll never forget when I started the uh, kickoff game back in 2008, uh, Nick Saban had just been in his first year at Alabama. He finished 7-6, and six, lost to Louisiana Monroe, believe it or not. And uh, I invited him and Clemson to come play in 2008 into our Chick-fil-A kickoff game. And when I called Nick, he said, Gary, I'd love to play because if I can win the state of Alabama and finish second in Georgia in recruiting, we'll play for national championships. And the second year we had in 2009, we had number five Alabama against number seven Virginia Tech. And Alabama won the game, went on to win the national championship. And uh, on the roster was 19 kids from Georgia. So that tells you how important, you know, uh, if you look across the country, there's, um, you know, kids from uh, Georgia on every roster. Uh, if you took the top 10 teams, I'll bet you there's kids, 
you know, multiple kids on every roster of the top 10 teams in the CFP right now. Yeah, and, and they're ready to go as soon as they get to campus because you talked about how great the coaching is in Georgia. I was fortunate, you know, kind of when Georgia was kind of on the come up, I played with Cam Hayward. He's been with the Steelers for like 15 years, probably an NFL Hall of Famer. Uh, obviously, Ohio State, we've had Justin Fields. We've had a ton of success getting these Raekwon McMillan, guys that are just absolute. They're great kids. They're really, really, really well coached. And, you know, they're, they're guys you just plug in and they're ready to rock. And uh, it's really fun. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the elephant in the room, something that you know, I did my research before I interviewed you. My Ohio State Buckeyes, BuckeyeScoop.com's Ohio State Buckeyes, we've never played in your bowl game. And I know that you guys have had Michigan, Michigan State. I know that you don't obviously have the control over that because it's a selection process. But, man, what would it mean to you guys to host the Ohio State Buckeyes in either – I would love for us to do a kickoff classic. That would be fantastic just because, you know, like I said, anything, anytime we can get into the state of Georgia for recruiting purposes, that is good. But what would it mean to host – the Ohio State Buckeyes in a playoff game potentially, or even you know way down the road, you know a kickoff classic type game. Well, it would mean the world to us. You know, we we've had ACC versus SEC for so long before we joined the CFP that it's so nice to have you know Washington, TCU, Michigan, Michigan State, all come in to play, and Oklahoma to come in to play. All these big brands, and you know, right? We've never had Ohio State. Uh, so we'd love to have Ohio State. We did uh, try last year, two years ago, I guess it is now, to uh, get the Oregon-Ohio State game moved to our Chick-fil-A kickoff game. Ooh. And uh, I think the world of Gene Smith, I think he's, you know, one of the best ADs in the country and love, love him and would love to work with him in a, in a bowl atmosphere. So, yeah, we'd love the opportunity to uh, host Ohio State. You know, it may still happen this year. Um, I know they'd rather come only when there's a semifinal game. So we got to make it happen either this year or 2025. Yeah, and uh, you guys hosted the championship in a couple of years as well. So, I mean, we could you know, make it happen. That's all right. We'll host the championship game. You're right. In 2025, after the 24th season, we host the uh, national championship game. So we got two or three opportunities for Ohio State to come see us. Well, I, I'm telling you, we have a humongous base in Atlanta, uh, in the South. Uh, one of our title sponsors, Force Air Freightliner, uh, they've got three stores in the state of Georgia, so we'd be all over it. We'd come down in droves. And our our bull hosts love Ohio State our, our fans, they show up. They usually drink the to town dry. Uh, they like to party. They like to fill the hotels up. You know, they like to wear their gear. They like to buy everything in sight. You know, so, I mean, it's like we're people love us because when, when our people show up, man, it's usually it's cold in Ohio. Like right now, it's like 17 degrees in Ohio. So even if it's 50 in Atlanta, that feels like you're in Miami. You know, so it's like you're on a tropical vacation. So our people love to travel for these bowl games. Um, uh, well, gosh, I have to... it's 72 degrees in the uh, Mercedes-Benz Stadium with the roof closed for the game. I, I I tell you what, Ryan Day would love you forever because our guys we we like a fast track. We like speed. We don't like snow. And, and again, it's not that we don't like it, but, you know, we're an aerial attack team. And, you know, when it's perfect conditions, teams better be scared because our guys can throw the crap out of the ball. And we have Marvin Harrison Jr., CJ Stroud. We would love to come see you. A uh, couple questions. Um, bowl gifts. This is, I'm going through my BuckeyeScoop.com subscribers. Great questions. Um, what's your favorite bowl gift that you've given out to the players? Do you guys do the, like, the, the Visa gift card? Do you guys produce something? Um, like when I, like I said, when I, when I was a player, like the bowl gift was like the Christmas gift. You know, you got like a, you know, like back in the old days, like a portable DVD player or a camcorder or a PlayStation. What were some of the funnest bowl gifts you've given out over the last few years to, uh, to your participants? You know, it's interesting. We've, uh, researched, we, we go back on campus and visit with the players and the coaches and administrators after every bowl game, just to, there are clients, there are customers, and the only way you improve is you uh, you, you talk to your customers, find out what uh, what I call the good, the bad, and the ugly was. And um, we've learned from the players that over time, most of them have electronic electronic equipment, and you can't guess as to what they may have and may not have. So what we've done is create a Visa vanilla card that 
um, is filled with $400 uh, that they can go out and spend, you know, instead of a gift suite that we host, you know, the world is their gift suite. They can spend it on anything they want. You know, we've heard great stories of, you know, guys buying uh, gifts, Christmas gifts for their mom, for their little brother, their little sister with that card that, uh, you know, they didn't have money. So, well, now with NIL, they probably have money, but they didn't have money back then. And so, uh, wow. you know, having that Visa card was important. Then we give them a, a panel of football. Uh, we have a barber shop that we come in, we bring in uh, one night. So uh, two nights before the game, the guys can look sharp for the game and uh, we give them their football so they can get their teammates to sign them because in five, 10 years when they're in business, you know, you want that football sitting on your uh, desk or your credenza. So we want to leave them with that memory. We give them a watch and then we give them a Chick-fil-A gift card to uh, go buy some Chick-fil-A. See, I, I think that's genius because, you know, the, the Visa gift card is the way to go because you don't know if a kid already has an Xbox, a PlayStation, wants a camcorder. So then you have kids that are trying to return it to get the thing that they need or they're not doubling up anything. I think you guys do it the right way. I think that that's ingenious. So uh, uh, kudos to you. I think the barber shop is genius, you know, because these guys, they all want to look fresh. They want to look lined up for the game. So you guys bringing that in is something that, I've never heard of, and frankly, I think is one of the, the coolest things. A lot of these uh, football facilities like Ohio State, we have a barber shop in our football building now, and the barber shows up on Thursday and, and, and lines these guys up so they, they look right for game day. So kudos for you guys for doing that in, in a foreign city for a lot of these kids. You know, if they've never been to Atlanta, they probably don't know where to get their haircut. So you guys do it for them. That's awesome. Uh, and I love the Chick-fil-A thing. My kids eat a ton of Chick-fil-A. They love it. It's their favorite. Macaroni and cheese is fantastic. You know, the little nuggets are great. So the sandwiches are great when you, you know, always have cheese them. They're good. Um, this is great. <laughs> like I want to know, since you guys are so tired of Chick-fil-A, what's your Chick-fil-A order? And how often do you, do you eat Chick-fil-A? Since that's, you know, they're your title sponsor and you guys are constantly doing business with them. Uh, obviously the great marketing of having a, um, a restaurant in the Ben's Dome that is closed on Sunday when the Falcons are playing. This is a great marketing idea. Um, what do you like so much about Chick-fil-A and the brand and, and having all the ties with them and the Peach Bowl? Well, they've been a great partner. They're the longest uh, partner now in bowl history. Uh, they joined us in 1997 when they were just a Southeastern company, and now they're nationwide. Um, and uh, so they've been with us for 26 years now as title sponsor, title partner, we call them, because when we meet, we start the meeting with uh, what can we do for you? And they reciprocate what they can do for us. And so, uh, you know, they'll they'll feed cheerleaders, band, players, you know, everybody that comes down for the game. Um, and I always tell people, I said, their food is fantastic. They always get your order right. It's always hot. They're always pleasant. Um, unlike a lot of quick service restaurants, but their people are even more, uh, uh, they're even better than their food. And that's quite a compliment because their food is excellent. So uh, we're blessed to have them. And, uh, you know, they, they, uh, they do a great job and really look out for the people and the, and the uh, teams and the administrators when they come down. We feed the administration three meals a day, hospitality wise. And have all the Chick-fil-A food there, um, you know, during the week. So, yeah, people people get a chance to eat quite a bit of Chick-fil-A when they come to our, our bowl game. I love that. And, again, it's it's always nice when you have a great sponsor, a sponsor that's known for their, their conscientious uh, customer service, the way they do their business, their culture. Uh, it's something that I think most companies try to emulate, frankly, because, you know, nobody is ever like, oh, man, those the people Chick-fil-A, the, the service is out of this world good. Uh, their efficiency is remarkable in the way they churn through drive throughs and you see a big line and you're like, well, yeah, but the line will be done in three minutes because they're just that on point with what they do. So remarkable company. I'm sure it's it's fun to be sponsored by a company, partners with a company that you can learn a lot from, which has got to be neat for you and your people. Um, I'm going to wrap this thing. Uh, final question. Where do you see college football headed over the next five, 10 years? Obviously, we're going to the 18 playoff people are really excited about. Do you see further expansion? Do you see a 12-team? Uh, you know, the, the, the mega conference stuff has been huge on 
Buckeyes scoop. We actually broke uh, the U the USC and UCLA moves to the Big Ten. Uh, we've actually had that for a, a long time before it's uh, confirmed. Where do you see that headed? Uh, what do you see as the future of, of, of college football? And you know, how do you guys fit into the mix as we go from eight to potentially twelve or sixteen uh, playoff playoff teams? Yeah, it's interesting. You know, the uh, commissioners today, you know, taking leadership from the management committee, which is comprised of the presidents. The presidents voted twelve nothing to to move the playoff of twelve teams forward in 2024 and 25. And then they'll start a whole new negotiation with new bowl contracts, new TV contracts in 2026. Um, they, they jumped one of the hurdles today to get it done for 24 in agreeing to splitting the revenue. Um, so that was a big hurdle to get through. They're in negotiations with the Rose Bowl now. Um, and they've, uh, they've done their research to be able to play first round games on campus. So in 24, if they do move forward, we would be a quarterfinal game. And then uh, 25 for the 12 team playoff, we'd be the semifinal. As to the future, you know, I, I've been saying this for a long time. I, I think college football needs a commissioner. I, I think it needs a board that's comprised of ADs like Gene Smith that know college football so they can deal with scheduling, they can deal with uh, uh, the playoffs, they can deal with all the football issues that are so important. I mean, after all, football provides 80% of the revenues to most of the universities in the Power Five. And um, I think we need, we need a focus on uh, football. And so the only way you can do that, you can't, not to denigrate the presidents, but they don't know the sport they have too much going on campus, so they can't provide a vision. You need someone to really provide a vision of the sport, where it's going. And I think you can only do that with a commissioner and a, and a board that's comprised of college football people. And um, you can deal with expansion. You can deal with the playoff scheduling, how many games conferences play, you know, obviously working with the commissioners of each of the uh, conferences. But I think it's really important that we really bring a focus to college football. It's such a big business now, um, you know, and you got to deal with NIL, you got to deal with transfer portal, you got to deal with the Alston case, you got to deal with all these issues out there, early signing date. Um, nobody's focused on that, you know, day to day. Um, and if you you got to you got to know that college football is the second most favorite sport in this country in the United States, only behind the NFL. It's more favored by fan avidity studies than baseball, NHL, NBA, et cetera. So, uh, and all those organizations, you know, have huge offices and commissioners dealing with all the, the things you have to deal with with those sports. We don't, and that's a mistake. I think it's, it's an opportunity. Um, for the future with everything that's going on. We've got to put some guidelines to transfer portals. We, we, we've got to, you know, get our arms around this NIL, the collectives. We've got scheduling. Scheduling shouldn't be eight conference games in some and nine in others. Um, you know, we've got to look at the playoffs. Uh, I think, you know, one of the issues is there's no relationship right now with the NFL. We've got to develop a relationship with the NFL because you know, I look at our game last year, Michigan State and Pitt. We had two All-Americans, Kenneth Walker and, and uh, Kenny Pickett, opt out of our game. Um, if this game last year, Michigan State and Pitt, was in the playoffs of 2024, let's say, it would have been a quarter. It would have been a first-round game. Well, these kids were provided after their conference championship game a draft card from the NFL that had a one on it which means, you know, uh, uh -huh. I think Hutchinson signed for $20 million signing bonus. Okay, now you're going to tell me you play. All the kids uh -huh. are hurt at the end of the season. The way to get really hurt badly is when you're hurt already. And they're going to play, uh, let's say Pitt plays Michigan State, Michigan State wins. Now their next game's against Georgia. Now their next game's against Alabama. 
Now their next game's against Ohio State to win a national championship. You know, and those games are all going to be within a week, not a month in between each of them. So I think we've got to get insurance policies for these kids who are first round draft choices and paid for either by the NFL, the CFP monies, let the colleges be able to uh, have a bigger insurance policy on the kids. Uh, but through some combination of that, and again, I'm saying the NFL because they do nothing to help college football right now. Uh, they're the benefactor, but uh, they should they should provide some benefit back to college football by giving these kids insurance policies when they give them a first round draft card. So those are some of the issues, some of the things why I think we need to focus and we need a college commissioner for college football. Yeah, I, I think the the insurance thing is, is very interesting. I actually did insurance for ten years. I did have uh, liability policies like like those. And the hardest part is, you know, you, I think you would have to secure a loss of value policy more so than a, a total disability policy because you know a lot of these kids take these policies out and they just don't get cash. They're they're they're, they're almost like free money for Lloyd's of London because unless you have like a debilitating car wreck or something where you can literally never pass an NFL physical. Uh, you don't get to collect on it. So you got a $100 million policy, but right. unless you can't pass any of the 32 teams' physicals, which generally there's very, very, very few of those that, that are like that, um, it's not on void. Now, if you could do a loss of value and you could you know, assess it and it could somehow you know, be, be come from some sort of pool, I mean, the NFL could put a pool of money aside and say, hey, if Aiden Hutchinson tears his ACL and he goes from the number two pick to the number 28 pick, you know, he gets X, he gets a $5 million check that comes out of this pool or it's out of some sort of, you know, because there, there's ways to manage that and do that. But the loss of value portion, if they could figure out a way to do that, would be huge for college football. Maybe everybody kicks in and you, know, you put that in a pool and, and there's going to be a lot of years where you're not going to use any of the money because, you know, guys won't get hurt. They won't lose value. But that's just the difficult thing that I've, I found this interesting is how do you prove, you know, okay, you said I was a number two overall pick, but... I ran a four nine nine forty, fully healthy. Did I lose value because I played Georgia and Bama and they cut blocked me ninety times in the game and you know they pancaked me a bunch of times so my legs didn't work good and I couldn't run fast. So it's that's like the fascinating thing to me as the season expands and, and these kids aren't making more money and and I also think something that would be progressive is if you you made a pool of money to help these parents who. A lot of, you know, I come from a single family household. I had to play in one bowl game. I didn't have to play in a Big Ten championship. That didn't exist when I played. But, you know, when your your parents are hard up or your parent is hard up, it's hard to get out to four games. It's hard to get to a Big Ten title, then a round of 16, exactly. a round of eight. And, and that is devastating on families. You know, they have to take out second mortgages. I hear these horror stories where they just want to go watch their kids play. But as you know, you know, in Atlanta, if you guys get the Buckeyes, like every flight from Columbus to Atlanta skyrockets, the hotels skyrocket because it's a hot ticket and, and they know there's going to be demand. And, you know, a lot of our, you know, the higher end donors, you know, a lot of, you know, they, they've got the money so they can pay whatever for a hotel room, but a lot of the parents can't because it's really hard. And, and I think that'd be an interesting proposal as the TV rights expand, you know, if they go to Apple TV or they go to Amazon prime uh, and, and these numbers keep multiplying and, they add, you know, a couple extra zeros every time that these these uh, negotiations come up. I think that would be really compelling for me. Obviously, it doesn't offset the NFL money that these kids potentially lose, but that'll be fascinating to see. Um, you know, that's just my little uh, my little diatribe on on the thing with the playoffs because it's it's hard on the families. Yeah, exactly I'm telling right. you. I mean, that, that's a great conversation, but you know, like we both talked about, it's an issue, yep. and we need to deal with it and people need to be cognizant of it and put money aside and work with the NFL, work with insurance policies, find a way to make sure that these kids are protected because if not, you know, I don't know how many people agree with me, but I think you may see some kids opt out, you know, and everybody says, well, you're playing for a championship, but when you get that first round draft card and the amount of money that's available now, and you got these agents whispering in these kids' ears, you know, I think we've got to have some kind of plan in place for that. Yeah, it's, again, like we have a kid, Jackson Smith and Jigba, preseason, All-American preseason, Belitnikov projected winner. Uh, he's he's come back twice early from hamstrings. He's pulled it again twice. I don't know. If, the only thing keeping him from making 
15 to 20 million dollars is if he can't run a 4 3 40 at the combine so yeah does he want to come back i'm sure he does because he's a he's an ultra competitive tough kid who who's literally quote unquote been hamstrung but you know it's 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 a big game now man these these numbers aren't getting smaller for these draft picks it's life-changing money you're talking uh, about generational money now that's, that's oh, yeah. the problem not the problem it's the reality you're just you're challenging, you're risking, you know, generational money, which can change your whole family's, you know, lifestyle. So we've got to be cognizant of that. Obviously, when I played, when you played, you know, the money wasn't available then. And so it's, yeah. it's a whole different deal, whole different issue to deal with now. Yeah. Well, I, uh, I'm going to wrap this. I'm trying to be cognizant of your time. This has been absolutely fantastic. I would love to have you uh, again. I mean, God, I want to I want to come to one of your games and just walk around with you for a day to see some of the stuff that you do and 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 eat, eat a couple of, you know spicy chicken sandwiches with you, you know. But I I uh, I really appreciate you guys and what you guys are doing to uh, to help the cause of these kids. I think that the insurance thing is important as long as it's a mechanism that works because that's the problem with the liability ones is if you go through the history of time, I don't know if any of those have ever cashed. It's almost like a running joke in the industry that you know you write these. You know, usually fifteen thousand per million policies, and they never cash. It's like free money for Lloyd's of London. So that'll be a fascinating to, yeah. thing to see as uh, as this progresses uh, through all this. So uh, I appreciate you guys. Uh, any closing words you have for for uh, Buckeye Nation as we get close to the playoffs? Obviously, the Michigan game looms large. Uh, you guys, in every bowl projection I see, it's uh, the University of Georgia versus a four seed. I don't know if by some miracle, I don't think Georgia's going to get knocked off. I think the Buckeyes are going to be probably two. Uh, but any closing words you have to to our Buckeye faithful, uh, and I, I'd love for you guys to host this. It would be amazing. Well, we'd love to have the opportunity at some point, hopefully this year or coming up, that we get the chance to host Ohio State, number one. Number two, the interesting thing with the CFP selection process, the committee uh, only gives one team a favorable uh geographical advantage and that's the number one team in the country so who's ever number one they get uh, the opportunity to play closest geographically uh, to have an advantage so you know obviously if it's Ohio State I think they'd, they'd be in Atlanta if it's Georgia I think they'd be in Atlanta if it's LSU Tennessee Michigan I think it'd be Atlanta obviously if it's someone like TSC you know they'd probably go to the Fiesta Bowl but um, we've had number one uh, against uh, number four twice. We've had it uh, in 16, Alabama, Washington, and then in 19, Joe Burrow and LSU against uh, Oklahoma. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll have to wait and see, but hopefully we get a chance to see that, uh, that Scarlet and Gray come down here to Atlanta. And uh, I know their fans are fantastic. Uh, everywhere I go, every game I see, Every bowl game, national championship game that Ohio State's in, it's uh, phenomenal the support that they provide for their team. So hopefully we get a chance to host you guys one of these times coming up. Yeah, I, we would love that. And one this final question, I swear. When you host a team like the 19 LSU team, which is probably the best college football team that's ever played the game, when they go on to that championship game, is there a part of you that is pulling for that team if, if you don't have a you know, Georgia or a rooting interest in the game because – you got to know those coaches, you got to know the wives, families, uh, you know, the kids and the players. And, you know, you guys, I know you guys usually take the coaches and their and their wives out to nice dinners, you know, maybe once during the week. Uh, is there a little party that pulls for that team just because you kind of got to know those guys for seven days before they went off to the championship game? Sure. There's, there's definitely an affinity to that team that has won in your game to go on and win the national championship. Uh, I've learned after being in this 25 years that, you know, I root for, for friends uh, rather than teams. So I've got a lot of friends in coaching now, and typically I'll root for them. So, uh, but most times in the bowl industry, you've got to be neutral. So we yeah, just right. want to see a good game. And like our game, we'll want to see a four overtime game and get a <laughs> yeah. large TV viewer audience. So, and have a yeah. great game. I, I love that. Yeah. Well, that's, that's fantastic. Well, I'm, I'm going to wrap this up. Gary, I appreciate this so much. You are a friend of the Scoop. You're part of the Scoop family officially now. So thank you so much for your time. Uh, I hope you have a great uh, selection Bye. process. Yeah, seriously, I, this was a blast. And I uh, learned a lot, which is Bye. my favorite kind of interview when I get to learn a little bit. And uh, 
Uh, any final words for, for our Scoop family on BuckeyeScoop.com? Well, just thanks for having us. And again, as we get closer, if we can help, we're, we're more than happy. And happy Thanksgiving to you and all your listeners. And I've enjoyed it. Thank you very much. And happy Thanksgiving to you and your family and your entire committee, uh, everybody that works for you, all your volunteers. Uh, I, hope, I wish you guys a great bowl season. I wish for four overtimes, and I wish for big TV ratings for you guys, okay? Great. Thanks, Kirk. All right. Thank you, Gary. Take care. Well, that was absolutely fantastic. One of the most powerful men in all of college football, uh, Gary Stokin, the head of the Peach Bowl, Inc., which is uh, the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl, uh, one of the preeminent games, a game that Ohio State, unfortunately, has never played in, but they have some massive games. Uh, they were hosting first-round game. The only way I think that we get to see them this year is if LSU beats Georgia. So go Tigers. I'd love to see us in the Peach Bowl down in Atlanta. Um, Atlanta. The home of four-star Freightliner, Jerry Cocan. Happy birthday, my friend. It is his birthday today. Uh, he has three locations down in Georgia. So shout out to my man, Jerry Cocan. Hope you have a great birthday. Uh, thank you, Scoop family. Comment, what did you learn? What would you like to know? I think that Gary will be a repeat visitor to the Scoop World Order. Uh, fantastic guy. I love learning kind of the ins and outs of playoff selection, bowl committee, the whole thing. So... I appreciate you guys for tuning in. Leave the comments down below. Shout out where you're from. Put all that in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, please leave us a like. Uh, if you are listening to us on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, please give us a five-star review. It helps people find our podcast. We are growing like crazy. It is all thanks to you guys, your goodwill, your word of mouth. We appreciate you guys so much. With that being said, as always, thank you, Buckeye Nation. You guys are the best. Thank you, Scoop family. I'm heading on to... Our premium boards at BuckeyeScoop.com. If you guys really want to know what's going on for the Michigan game, get on BuckeyeScoop.com. Bill Green did his chat all day. We've got some great nuggets. ton of recruiting intel uh, on the running back situation, which is kind of a quagmire right now. So we're getting bottom of that just for you guys. So appreciate you guys, as always. Thank you, Buckeye Nation, and thank you, Scoop family. You guys have a great rest of your day. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Go Bucks.